Today you'll learn how to build a foam wing glider. Dr. Zoon will first discuss some basic principles of flight. Then you'll cut out everything you need using scissors, a hobby knife, and the Pitsco wing cutter. Finally, you'll assemble your own foam wing glider. Hello kids. Today we're going to be working with gliders. But not just any gliders, these gliders will be foam wing gliders. Some of the materials you will need include three millimeter thick balsa, one millimeter thick balsa, one inch thick foam, modeling clay, a ruler, a metal straight edge, scissors, a sharp hobby knife, and a piece of cardboard or paper covered styrofoam like this one. You will also need some Pitsco Instacure glue and HD Bond adhesive. I will be using the Pitsco Instacure glue today for gluing the wood joints, but your teacher may prefer that you use HD Bond or another glue. With glues other than Instacure, you will have to hold the parts together or make a clamping fixture to hold the parts until they dry. I recommend the Instacure because it's lightweight and it sets up very rapidly. Let's begin by looking at the basics of flight and what makes an airplane fly. Four basic forces act upon airplanes. They are weight, lift, thrust, and drag. Whether an airplane is sitting on the runway or is in flight, gravity is pulling down on the airplane. The force of gravity is referred to as weight. The more an airplane weighs, the larger the force is that pulls down on the airplane. The weight of an airplane is counterbalanced by a force called lift. Lift is a force that pushes up on a plane. It acts in the opposite direction than the weight. The wings of an airplane produce lift as they cut through the air. Thrust is a force that moves the plane forward. On most airplanes, propellers or jet engines produce thrust. In the case of our glider, thrust is produced by us throwing the plane into the air. The last force acting on an airplane is drag. Drag is the resistance of the plane to forward motion. The friction of the airplane moving through the air produces drag. For an airplane to be in level flight, these forces must be balanced. If the lift is more than the weight, the airplane will begin to climb or move upward. If the weight is more than the lift, then the airplane will begin to descend or move downward. You may be wondering what the difference is between a foam wing glider and a balsa wing glider like this one. Aside from the fact that they are made from different materials, the foam wing is different because it's not a flat lifting surface like the balsa wing. The foam wing has a definite airfoil shape, one that can be designed to provide much more lift than a balsa wing. The shape of the airfoil will be a major portion of the design process in building your foam wing glider. You can design your wing shape using standard drafting tools, a computer drawing or CAD program, or with specialized wing design software such as the Wingmaster wing design software. This software has numerous standard wing designs that you can use as is, or you can modify them before printing them out. As you look at different airfoil designs, you will notice that there are many different airfoil shapes. Each one of them has a different curvature to it. The amount of curve on an airfoil is called the camber. In general, the more camber a wing has, the more lift it will have. Now we might say, that we want as much lift as possible. However, if we get too much lift for the size and mass of our plane, then it will tend to climb and stall except at very low speeds. Going back to the forces that act on an airplane, we need to choose an airfoil style that will just counterbalance the force of gravity or weight acting on the plane. I have decided to use one of the standard wing designs included in the Pitsco wing cutter the Clark Y. This wing design should give my glider good lift, but should not stall easily. For the fuselage and stabilizers, we will use the templates provided in the foam wing glider pack. 
There are two ways that we can transfer the template drawings to the balsa wood. We can use carbon paper between the template and the wood and trace over the drawing with a pen. I will cut out a photocopy of the template, place it on the wood, and trace around it. Let's go ahead and cut out the photocopy of the templates. The fuselage will actually be made from two pieces of three millimeter thick balsa. The names for these two templates are the fuselage pattern and the tailpiece pattern. Place the fuselage pattern on the wood and tape it in two or three places. Carefully trace around the pattern Then, remove the pattern. Now we're ready to cut the fuselage out using a sharp knife like this one. Kids, always use these knives carefully. They are sharp enough to cut the wood or your fingers. Also, be sure to have a piece of cardboard or a piece of paper covered styrofoam under the wood when you're cutting your wood. Begin cutting the wood, carefully following the outline of the fuselage. Be careful not to press too hard for this first pass. You just want to cut into the wood one millimeter or less. For best results, follow the outline from the front of the fuselage and move towards the back. Once you have gone over the entire outline the first time, begin at the front of the fuselage and cut around the outline again cutting deeper into the wood. Repeat the cut one more time, following the outline and cutting completely through the wood on the third pass. Carefully break out the fuselage. Tape the tailpiece pattern to the remaining wood and trace around it. For long straight cuts, like this one, it is best to use a metal straight edge as a cutting guide for your knife. Make the cut in two or three passes. Now cut along the small line and carefully remove the tailpiece. From the remaining wood, we will mark and cut out two wing supports using the wing support pattern. For the long straight cut, we will use our metal straight edge and cut through the wood. Then we will cut through the wood at the marks and remove the two wing supports. Before we assemble the fuselage, we need to check the fit between our fuselage and tailpiece. Fit the two pieces together like this. If the tops of the two pieces are not flush, sand the pieces so that the tops of the pieces are flush like this. Once the pieces fit together properly, use Pitsco Instacure Adhesive to glue the two pieces together. Before you add adhesive, Practice placing the tailpiece into the notch, making sure that both sides are flush and the tailpiece is in the correct position. Remove the tailpiece and place a line of adhesive on both edges of the notch in the fuselage. Carefully place the tailpiece into the notch making sure that both sides are flush and the tailpiece is in the correct position before applying pressure to the joint.
Hold the pieces together for a few seconds until the bond sets. Wipe any excess adhesive off the joint. Sand the edges of the fuselage and tailpiece so they are smooth. Round the front edge of the fuselage with the sandpaper to provide better aerodynamic flow across the nose of the plane. Sand the sides of the pieces lightly to ensure that they are smooth. Attach one of the wing support pieces to one side of the fuselage, centering the wing support over the joint between the fuselage and the tailpiece. The tops of the support and the fuselage should be flush. Place a line of Instacure adhesive to one side of the support. Then place it in position and press the pieces together. Repeat the process with the other support piece, positioning it on the side opposite the first support piece. Our fuselage is completed and we're ready for our stabilizers. The stabilizers will be cut from one millimeter balsa wood. Let's cut out the horizontal stabilizer first. We will attach the horizontal stabilizer pattern to the wood with masking tape and trace around it with a pencil. Using our metal straight edge and knife, we will cut along the lines to cut out our stabilizer. Let's mark out and cut the vertical stabilizer in the same fashion. Sand the bottom of the vertical stabilizer to ensure a straight, flat edge. Sand the other edges of the vertical stabilizer and the horizontal stabilizer, slightly rounding the edges. This will provide smooth airflow around these surfaces. Also sand the flat surfaces of these stabilizers lightly so they are smooth as well. We will attach the vertical stabilizer to the tailpiece in this position. With the slanted edge of the stabilizer toward the nose of the plane and the back of the stabilizer flush with the back of the tailpiece. The vertical stabilizer must be held exactly vertical when gluing it into the fuselage. Carefully place a line of Instacure glue adhesive on the bottom edge of the vertical stabilizer. Position the vertical stabilizer and press it into place. Check to be sure that the stabilizer is vertical. And hold it in that position until the adhesive sets. Before attaching the horizontal stabilizer, mark the center of the stabilizer by measuring the distance across the stabilizer and dividing that distance by two. In this case, the stabilizer is 15 centimeters across. So the center of the stabilizer would be at 7.5 centimeters. Position the horizontal stabilizer on the bottom of the fuselage with the center marks of the stabilizer at the center of the fuselage bottom. The back of the stabilizer should be flush with the back of the tailpiece. We'll turn this over 
and on the top side of the stabilizer, we'll make a pencil mark on each side of the fuselage to help us align the stabilizer when we glue it. Remove the stabilizer and place a line of Instacure adhesive on the bottom edge of the fuselage, beginning below the front of the vertical stabilizer and ending at the back of the tailpiece. Place the horizontal stabilizer back into position and press into place. Be sure that the horizontal stabilizer is perpendicular to the vertical stabilizer. Hold the pieces together until the adhesive has set. Kids, this is looking more like a plane with every step. Let's work on giving this plane a lift, aerodynamic lift that is. Since lift for our glider is provided by the foam wing, we need to take care in making our wing so that it provides the correct amount of lift. To make our wing, we will use a printout of our wing design, that is, the airfoil shape. Pencil in the curve from the horizontal center line to the leading edge of the wing shape. This will provide a ramp for the hot wire cutter to follow. We'll use a glue stick to glue the pattern or the template to a piece of cardstock, which is an ordinary index card. Using scissors, cut out the top piece. As you can see, I cut out the top template, including the bottom portion of the template to make our wing pattern like this. We'll repeat the process with the bottom template. And again, we'll start at the front point, but this time we will follow the bottom contour of the wing like this. We'll also cut out the bottom side of the template so that now we have two templates which are the top and the bottom portions of the wing. Use 360 grit sandpaper to carefully smooth the edges of the patterns removing any burrs or imperfections. To cut out our wing, we will use the Pitsco wing cutter. This cutter uses a hot wire to actually melt through the foam, separating it into two pieces. When the wing cutter is on, keep your fingers away from the wire as it is hot and may burn you. We will use a piece of foam 11 centimeters wide, the width of the template, and 23 centimeters long half of the wingspan of the plane. We will mount our piece of foam so that the foam block is centered from side to side on the platform and so that one of the long edges of the block is flush with the front of the platform. Attach the foam in position using double-sided scotch tape. Attach the bottom pattern of the wing shape to the edge of the foam block using two or three straight pins. The pattern should be positioned so that the vertical line towards the front of the wing is at the front edge of the foam. The bottom of the pattern should rest on the platform. Place a weighted object, such as this modeling clay, on top of the foam block to keep it from slipping as it is being cut. Move the platform to the forward position by lifting it up slightly and moving it forward until it stops. Position the cutting wire so that it is resting on the front edge of the foam. We're ready to cut the bottom shape of this wing. We will turn on the wing cutter and adjust the knob to the desired temperature setting, which for this situation will be about 8. 
If the temperature setting is too high, the cutter will melt away too much of the foam. If it is too low, it will drag through the foam and not cut a smooth line. Let's watch the wing cutter work. The cutter wire is following the shape of our pattern we cut. When the wire exits the back of the foam, we will shut off the wing cutter. Leave the weight and the two pieces of foam in position, but move the platform back to its forward position. Remove the bottom pattern and replace it with the top pattern. Once again, aligning the vertical mark at the leading edge of the wing shape with the front of the foam. Move the wire into position resting on the front edge of the foam. Start the wing cutter again and adjust the temperature setting. Let the hot wire do its work as it follows the shape of the top of the wing pattern. Once the wire has exited the back of the foam, turn the foam wing cutter off. Remove the weight and the pieces of foam from the cutter. Here we have our cutout wing. However, since this is just half of our wingspan, we will cut another wing out just like this one using the same patterns and processes as before. We have both wings cut out now, and they both need to be sanded into their final shape. Use 360 grit sandpaper to round the leading edge of the wing into shape. And sand the trailing edge to a sharp edge. We also need to sand the top and bottom surfaces of the wings until they are smooth. On many planes, the wings of the plane are horizontal and form a straight line across the wing. Some planes, including the glider we are building, have wings at a dihedral angle. That is, both wings are set at an angle from horizontal. We will need to sand the ends of the two wings where they meet at the fuselage at an angle so they fit together correctly. To do this, we'll take one of the wings and prop it up with a piece of foam. We will adjust it until the bottom tip of the wing is three centimeters from the surface of the table. With the wing in this position, we'll sand the end of the wing with a sanding block that has a vertical sanding surface. Sand the end of the wing until the sandpaper reaches the bottom end of the wing and the complete wing tip is cut at an angle. Repeat the process for the other wing, being sure to sand the opposite end of the wing as the two wings are facing each other. When the wing ends are sanded to the correct angle, put them together to see how they fit. They should fit together without any gaps, and the total wing shape should now look like this. If needed, sand the ends slightly so that you are satisfied with their fit. Now the wings are ready to be glued together. When gluing foam, we cannot use Instacure glue or other types of cyanoacrylate or CA glue. The CA glues will dissolve the foam. 
To glue the wings together, we will use HD bond glue. We will need to have two supports, like these pieces of foam, that we can put under each wing section to hold them at the proper angle while the glue dries. Position the foam blocks and the wings so the angled ends of the wing meet and the wing tips are both three centimeters above the surface. Mark the position of the two blocks and the point that the wings meet on the cutting surface. Place a line of HD bond glue along one of the angled wings ends. And position the wings and foam piece so the wing tips are at three centimeters again. Gently press the wings together and hold for a few minutes. Set the wings aside to dry for at least one hour. Once the glue is dry on the wing, we can glue the wing to the fuselage of the glider. Again, we will use HD Bond glue. Place the wing into position on top of the fuselage, centering the joint between the two wing sections directly above the fuselage and center the wing front to back over the wing supports. Mark the position of the front and back of the wing on the fuselage. Place an object under each wing so that the wing is held into position where the two wing tips are at the same height from the surface. Mark the position of the fuselage on the cutting surface. Remove the wing and place a line of HD bond glue on the top of the fuselage between the marks showing the position of the wing. Also put a line of HD bond on the top edge of each wing support. Place the wing back on the fuselage, relocating it as before. Press the wing down gently onto the fuselage. Place the assembled wing and fuselage back into position with the wings resting on the objects and the fuselage at the mark on the surface. Be sure both wing tips are at the same height, then let the glue dry for at least one hour. Once we have the plane assembled, we need to balance the plane so that the center of gravity is just in front of the center of the wing. The center of gravity is the point where the plane is balanced from front to back and from side to side. To balance the plane properly, we will place the plane on the tips of our thumb and forefinger, each about four centimeters from the fuselage and about one third of the cord length from the front of the wing. When we set the plane in this position, it should balance from front to back on our fingertips. Let's see how this plane does. The back of the plane is heavier than the front, so we need to add some weight to the nose. Let's use a little modeling clay to add some weight. Place the plane back into the balanced position and see if we have the proper weight. This looks pretty good. 
With the plane balanced, we're ready for the first flight. To test the glider, a large indoor room such as a gym is ideal. If you have to fly the plane outside, try to pick a calm day. To launch the plane, hold it by the fuselage just below the back of the wing. Move the plane forward smoothly and with little force for the first few flights. Watch how the plane flies and adjust the plane using the following tips. If the plane dives soon after letting it go, reduce the amount of clay. If the plane rises rapidly and then stalls or loops, then add more clay to the nose. If the plane turns from one side or the other, check to be sure the wing is centered on the fuselage and that the vertical stabilizer is straight or in line with the fuselage. Kids, this is a very simple glider. Let me give you some tips that may help your glider fly even better. You can modify the way your glider flies by gently twisting the horizontal and vertical stabilizer surfaces. Slight changes in these surfaces will change the performance of your glider. Round the corners of the wing and stabilizers to reduce drag. Use a water-based finish or sanding sealer to seal the surface of the foam before sanding. Sand all surfaces as smooth as possible. Tape small flaps of paper, about two centimeters long and one centimeter wide, onto the trailing edge of each side of the wing. You can also try these flaps on the horizontal and vertical stabilizers as well to change the performance of your glider. Kids, you will probably want to build several gliders of your own design and see how well they fly. Be patient and work carefully to build the very best glider you can. I hope you have fun building this foam wing glider. Until next time, this is Dr. Zoon saying, see you real soon.